Where are we at though? And got my bonus, 40 peak rides, 110 total. Sunday, 2 p.m. And I just finished up my client programs and drove this morning early, stayed in this weekend, didn't get into any drinking or partying really. And I'm very, very happy with that. Actually just had a fun night Friday, smoked some strawberry banana, native roots medicine. This is mother's milk. Sounded a little weird. Strawberry banana was delicious though and did a little trolling. So weekend was chill. I feel much better. I was talking about how three days on one day off is a little much and it still feels like it is. So um, yeah, probably gonna switch to some sort of upper day off, lower upper day off, upper, lower, something like that where I have a two to one upper days basically or I have two upper days then a lower day, then an upper day, then a lower day then two upper days and a lower day, just because squatting all the time on my hips and my back is like definitely getting challenging. But again, I'll get into that the more, well, I get, I'll get into that I guess after this pull day when I see how my body feels after three days of training in a row. But for me, three days of training in a row and having a life is really not doable. Three days of training in a row and not really working hard, laying around, doing nothing, maybe that would be doable. But for me, it's really not. Um, lift has been going well, lifting has been going well. And there's so much to do out here that I can't just be at home eating meals, sleeping, and it's just not practical really to make no more progress. So more rest is gonna do me well, and the food has been coming in a lot. Finally, I've put on, or I've like added body weight where I feel strong and I can recover, but we'll see. Uh, a little bloated right now, so we're gonna go get this training session done. Should be good, hopefully the bloat turns into a pump or it just is going to be a good pump. But nothing to complain about. Gonna finish up my Sunday afternoon and then tonight heading out of town a little bit. So I'm excited, not sure if you guys are coming with, but we will do this pull day Sunday midday and see if it's empty. Hopefully the gym is empty. It's a holiday tomorrow, so maybe, well, let's go check it out. Let's go to the gym. Alright guys, what's going on? So this is going to be a video based on someone's comments and that comment, we've got one take at this because I've got like 12% on my camera, my camera battery is on, its, on its way out. So one thing I wanted to cover is I did this pull day after I kind of pulled back on my squats because my hip was feeling weird and my pull day went really well. I think I did two, four, six, eight, like eight or nine sets, eight sets of pull ups with zero pain so my biceps feel better. The tendonitis is fine, but I did get sore biceps from like doing some weird concentric, fast concentric training. I don't know what happened, but that was just kind of a freak accident from just training a lot and everything's fine now. So the pull-ups were great. Full range of motion, I stopped really curling my feet up and I'm just dead hanging my body, which is helping me stay more vertical and not arch my back as much. So if you guys can get on a bar high enough to where you can let your feet dangle, definitely let your feet dangle. I'll probably take my shoes off, like wear some slip-ons and start doing them barefoot so I just get a little bit of extra reach. Because curling my feet up makes me kind of hinge at the hip and it just changes the exercise a little bit for me. This felt much more natural, just grab and pull. Felt completely better, so I'm definitely gonna start doing that with my pull-ups. But again, this comment, we're gonna get to it in a second. It's a good one. It's actually more of a run-on paragraph because it's like this long on YouTube. So I'll put it in the screen when I read it out and we'll just cover some points. Hopefully we can get that done in this video regular back training session, but remember I've been talking about taking more rest days and switching from three days on one day off. Well, I took a couple rest days and my bench day today was phenomenal. So next video you guys will see an epic bench session. And this was an epic pull session because I knew I was gonna take a day or two off. So I rested between sets. I knew I was gonna be taking a couple days off. So I went harder and for me, that's just gonna be the way to go. We do some posing at the end here. We're looking swole, so body weight's good. Definitely not cutting back on food. I know I said I was feeling like I was getting a little bit fluffy but if I'm gonna be getting stronger and taking uh, maybe an extra rest day or two, keeping the food the same will allow me to get stronger, etc. I say that, but you guys know how slow gains are. So let's get into this question. I'm gonna flip it into the screen and try to paraphrase it while you guys see it right now. So, I love your content, man. I have a legitimate question to ask. Do you ever think that you have a really poor recovery capacity? Like me, you train natural, uh, yet are on gear, and you have a crazy physique. Um, so I'll stop right there. Um, so he's asking if I think I have poor recovery. 
Well, I've always been pretty bad at sports. Um, my genetics for bodybuilding, like putting on muscle naturally, are terrible. My genetics for strength are also at best average. So maybe my aesthetic genetics are average or above average. So by maximizing my strength with a little bit of gear, I actually look pretty good. And I'm just going on what people tell me and what I see in the gym. As far as my ego goes, I could care less how I look. It's about developing my physique to the max ability. If I have 18 inch arms, great. But they're 16, still great. I'm still very, very happy with everything I'm doing because it's just bodybuilding, not trying to look like other dudes. So let's just stop the question there and say, do I think I have a poor recovery capacity? Well. If my ability to build muscle and strength is low, and my ceiling for that is relatively low or average, then I would by default think that in order for me to try to get really, really strong, I'm gonna be maxim maxing out my recoverable volume. So if I wanna bench 315 by the end of the year, it doesn't really matter if my recovery capacity is good or not, because for me to get there, I'd have to train so heavy so often that whether I have average or good recovery or bad recovery, I'm not going to recover that well. Same thing if I wanted to hit a 365 bench by the end of the year. Whether I had good recovery or not, I don't have the ceiling that high to actually get that big and muscular. Just from 11 years of training observation, is it possible? Maybe. But at this stage, it doesn't seem very possible. And if that's because of recovery or poor recovery, I'm not sure. But if it is, then yes, I have poor recovery and maybe below average. And that's not me playing the victim. I have friends who are benching 365 when they were 20 years old. I would imagine, and football players, senior year of high school, who'd run head first into each other and then deadlift 550 the next day. I would think they have average or above average recovery. And me, on the other hand, who's struggling to get to their size at 28 on gear, maybe my recovery is probably average or below average. So yeah, I agree with you. Um, I don't know what you mean by I train like a natural. I have no idea what that means. If you mean I train like I'm smart, like I'm not using tread and blasting gear year round like a dumb bodybuilder, then yeah, I guess I train like a natural. But to me, I don't think naturals and enhanced people train differently. It's about compound movements, heavy, isolation and accessory movements for your weak body parts, whether you're enhanced or natural. But to you, I train like a natural. So whatever you think a natural is, that's up to you and your discretion. Isolation works. Muscle EMG research shows activation on different heads on the quad and the squat compared to leg extension. Nothing is wrong with variety. Actually, there is a lot wrong with variety. You don't get good at throwing a baseball by throwing 20 different shaped objects. You get good at a baseball by throwing a baseball. Same thing with golf. You get good at swinging the golf club by swinging the golf club, not swinging the broomstick, and then swinging a weighted golf club to train acceleration patterns and speed patterns and all these types of things. Same thing with riding a bike. You don't get good at riding your bike by riding five totally different two-wheeled bicycles and then thinking that you're gonna get the proper, um, I guess, mind-muscle connection, which is just building muscle synapses and motor patterns. So. The fact that you say nothing is wrong with variety, I guess I agree, but there's also everything right with getting really good at exercises that make you the strongest. So I'd rather be good at a squat than be good at a leg extension, curl, back extension, calf raise, but never do the squat. So sure, nothing's wrong with variety, but you have to provide context because that's really a weightless statement. I know that you're really into Jason Blaha, whatever he says, there isn't anything magical about squats, bends, and deadlift, actually. Uh, training and building muscle, there's nothing magical about any exercise that's ever been invented or else we'd all be doing it. But aside from magic, uh, maybe you're confusing the word magical with really beneficial and there is something really beneficial about squat, bench and deadlifts, overhead press as well and pull-ups. They're all natural body movements, mostly where you move your body through space. Benching and push-ups is kind of that whole idea. So these are multi-joint exercises where you move your body through space and that is proven to build and stimulate and activate the most muscle fibers in your body while strengthening your joints through the largest ranges of motion. So again, I don't really see your point there, but I understand what getting at, I guess. People build great physiques without them, very true. People also build great physiques by taking trend. People also build great physiques by choosing the right parents and then, I don't know, playing dodgeball in high school and they get pretty big anyway. So what people do with their physiques and the exercises they choose is irrelevant to choosing an exercise and getting good at it. If I wanna get a big bench because I think it's gonna help my chest, I don't care what everyone else does for their chest. I care about the science that supports 
the bench press as a proper chest exercise, and I care about the people doing the bench press properly and watching what happens to their strength and physique, like powerlifters, like Larry Wheels, and whoever else. Um, you need more than the big three to get big. I would actually probably say that's true. You definitely need some type of overhead press. You definitely need some type of row and some pull-ups. So the fact that you're trying to tell me after 11 years of lifting that I need more than three exercises to get big, thanks, but I think that's probably the most obvious statement you could ever say. And in reality, someone with good genetics blasting trend could get massive with the big three. Ronnie Coleman could have been Mr. Olympia probably with just the big three. Okay, maybe not, but he probably would have turned pro with the big three. So I understand what you're saying, but it's not necessarily true. Take it for someone on their journey who did starting strength. Honestly, I'm not interested in someone's journey who has a screen name. If I knew you and saw you train and knew what your physique looked like and knew your genetics and your potential, then I would take it from you. But uh, yeah, it's, this is internet conversation, so I'm not gonna take it from you. I'll read what you have to say though. There's plenty of research on frequency when they saw great gains from six times per week. That's true, but push-pull legs is a bodybuilding style split where you push your body to full exhaustion. The six times a week is go in, do a peak set of bench and go home, not peak set of bench, then five more sets of bench, then four sets of overhead press, then... All right guys, so unfortunately my memory card was full, but we were talking about training frequency. I made some really good points, but I'll just wrap it up here. Uh, this guy's saying how training you know, three, six times per week is possible, so I should be able to recover, but that has nothing to do with, that doesn't take into account volume or weight. So if this person saying isolation work is really good or that EMG show that isolation is really good, if you do train a muscle three to six times a week, you're gonna come in and do a compound movement or a heavy movement, not really an isolation because no one does volume training, daily volume training like that with like a bicep. You'll do it with a big exercise. So again, three to six times per week on a big exercise for one set is not the same as doing a full push workout. And yeah, basically to sum up, he starts talking about, does it make sense that I take gear and have poor recovery? Maybe it's just genetics. Um, he trains body five by five, full body, this and that, the length of my anabolic window. So it's basically just, you know, commenting on what he thinks about my training and that because I'm training light and training with lower volume and lower frequency that if I'm not feeling recovered, then I must have poor recovery and that's that's fine if my recovery is slightly below average i mean thanks for discovering that for me i'm pretty sure i had a good grasp on that myself but um what i think i'm doing rel my relative strength to my genetic potential um you probably just haven't reached your genetic potential with strength and if i'm benching 255 pounds for multiple sets for triples maybe you're doing 300 pounds for triples and you're recovering fine, but maybe your genetic potential is up to a 400 pound bench and maybe mine's just a 300 pound bench. So if you're training full body and you're recovering just fine, train for five more years, increase your maxes on each lift by 100 pounds or so, and then tell me if your volume now and your volume five years from now, if you keep it the same, just upping the weight, you tell me if it's easier to recover or the same. It's impossible that it'll be the same to recover. If you're benching 200 and squatting 200 and doing a few pull-ups, full body three days a week and you recover just fine, well, if you gain 20 pounds of muscle over the next five years, then maybe it won't be so easy. So once you're benching as much weight as me or doing as many pull-ups as me and you're relative to what I'm doing at your potential, maybe you won't find training to be so easy and maybe you won't find recovery to be so easy. So I like that you're training full body and doing five by five, that's great. Um, definitely a way to go if for a beginner or novice or even an intermediate if you structure it properly. But again, thank you for trying to point out something that, you know, about my genetics. I find that to be extremely difficult to get accurate. But I don't disagree. I think my recovery is best average and probably a little below average. So we'll see about the future, but I think if you get stronger and put more time in the gym, you'll realize that once you're maxing out your potential, it's not so easy to get in the gym and to feel like you're recovering just fine. When you're strong for you, when you truly get strong, yeah, I think you'll find things to be a little bit differently. Peace.